Darkness is the canvas and the light is my brush. With light painting you can create new worlds in the darkness. My name is Hannu Huhtamo and I paint with light. I live in Finland. We have amazing nature here. We have uh, long summer nights that are warm and full of light. But on the opposite, there is also this dark part. It's called polar night. It starts in December and it lasts for about 50 days. The sun doesn't rise above the horizon at all. And for a light painter, that is quite good. I do long exposure photography, which is a photographic technique that allows me to draw with light. Uh, the exposure times can vary from a seconds to hours. And the idea is to use the light sources as the brushes or pencils. And the dark surroundings are the canvas. When I start, I might do some sketches on paper. After that, I go to the location. I search for details that I want to emphasize with some light treatment. It will start to look like a completely new place. Going to a dark woods or to an abandoned house, you first think that, oh, I don't want to go there because there's just so nasty looking dark places. But through light painting, I have examined these places and they look beautiful. You see the place differently. Οι γιγαντοαφίσες, ουσιαστικά ο σκοπός της γιγαντοαφίσας, ουσιαστικά είναι να προσελκύσει το κοινό. Είναι σαν τη διαφήμιση της ταινία. Ονομάζομαι Βεργινία Αξιώτη και εδώ και ένα έτος ζωγραφίζω τις γιγαντοαφίσες για τον κινηματογράφο Αθήνεων στους Αμπελόκηπους. Αυτή τη στιγμή ε, ο μόνος κινηματογράφος στον οποίο υπάρχουν ε, ζωγραφιστές αφήσεις ε, με την πρώτη αφίσα το Mad Max. Έχω κάνει αρκετές, ε, το Σάλι έκανα πρόσφατα και μου άρεσε επίσης πάρα πολύ με το Tom Hanks. Τι να σας πω, δεν θυμάμαι, άμα κάτσα να σκεφτώ θα θυμηθώ πολλά. Μια ζωγραφιστή γιγαντοαφίσα θέλει κατά μέσο όρο τρεις με τέσσερις μέρες. Ευτυχώς υπάρχει το μέσο του προτζέκτορα το οποίο μας διευκολύνει τους. Αυτό που εμένα με παρακινεί και με προκαλεί πάρα πολύ στην αφίσα είναι κυρίως το μέγεθός της. Το να ζωγραφίζω τις γιγαντοαφίσες η αλήθεια είναι ότι με βάζει σε μια διαδικασία που ελαφρώς μπορώ να πω ότι νιώθω και εγώ μέρος. Είναι τα εγγένεια, είναι η πρεμιέρα, δηλαδή και εγώ βάζω το χεράκι μου έστω και λίγο για να γίνει η έναρξη, για να γίνει η πρεμιέρα της κάθε ταινίας κάθε εβδομάδα. Είναι κάτι το οποίο κάνει και, το, και τον θεατή να προσεγγίζει τελείως διαφορετικά το χώρο του κινηματογράφου που θα πάει να δει μια ταινία. Όταν περνάμε απ' έξω και βλέπουμε τις ζωγραφιές ε, αναρτημένες, ε, πιο ανθρώπινο θα το έλεγα, πιο οικείο, πιο γλυκό. I started painting music just because I would try to explain synesthesia so many times. It never quite made as much sense to describe it verbally. So I thought it would be best just to put it on canvas just because I've always been an artist. And it made it much easier for people to be able to understand it. My name is Melissa McCracken and I am a synesthetic artist. 
Synesthesia is a neurological condition where your brain is basically cross-wired, so certain stimuli will come in and it'll create the wrong response in my brain. So for me, that's listening to music and it's translated into color in my head. I'm going to paint Superstition by Stevie Wonder. I love the song Superstition just because it's dynamic and funky and just fun and expressive. Whenever I start a piece, I have to listen to the song first to even know what kind of colors I'd like to use. There are some songs that I hate that I like the way that they look a little bit. Like a lot of pop music can, can be pink and purple and you know just all these fun bright colors but song's not that good. <laughs> so one or the other, I appreciate it somehow. <laughs> you know, you kind of really have to be in the right vibe to be able to paint. If you're not in the right vibe, you're not gonna make anything good. I think the prettiest genre of music is jazz music. I love blues and golds and whites and it just seems very pearly and iridescent a little bit. When I listened to Etta James at last, the thing that stuck out most to me was just her voice at the very beginning when she goes into the at last. At last. And it's just a very bright and but also warm sort of feeling. Very kind of classic jazzy, which jazz music generally has a very gold and blue sort of look to it. Music has always been a, a very big part of my life. My older brother is very musical, and when I think back of him playing the guitar for me, I think of the colors of what those memories are. I was always a little disappointed because I was never very musically inclined. It was really cool to have a way to bring music into, you know, my life in a different sort of way. What I do is more than a manicure, it's microactivism. You can be cute and multifaceted and vocal about your message. My name is Amy Vega and I'm a nail artist out of New York City. I became a nail artist by chance. It was always something I did for myself since I was maybe 13 years old. And I thought about it and I wanted to pursue it more seriously. So I went to nail school and got my license. So I work on fashion shoots, but nail art is mostly what I do. I think socially conscious nail art is important now more than ever because of the things going on, not just in our country, but all around the world. Everything under Black Lives Matter, women's rights, LGBT rights, women's health, domestic violence against women is also another one. No matter what you have on your nails, they bring attention. It brings your eyes to their nails. It kind of brings the conversation into real life. Nowadays we depend so much on social media and it kind of just brings that interaction of person to person. Somebody will see your nail art and want to inquire and then you have a moment and an opportunity to talk about that topic. It's more than just being cute and having cute nails. It's having a message and feeling strong about it and be vocal about it. As a woman, sometimes we're made to be a bit more submissive and this is a way of kind of getting strength in our own messages and saying, hey, I am gonna be cute, but I also have a message to say and I'm gonna wear it on my fingers, you know? To be an activist means to feel strongly about something, whatever it may be. More than anything, staying true to yourself and your message. The main difficulties of working with any vulnerable or fragile work of cultural heritage is the respect you have to have for that object. Technology is at a point right now where we can record the surface of an object down to fractions of a millimetre. And it's through this kind of understanding that allows you to communicate across time and across cultures. The task of heritage protection and preservation is a real challenge. The mission of Factum Foundation is to record cultural heritage. So in the event that there's a disaster or an accident, 
we have the data to know what was there exactly as it is. We're pioneering a number of methods to return that information into the physical world. We're doing CNC milling, we're doing 3D printing, but we're trying to go beyond that. A facsimile of the Borgarini Chapel, the facsimile of the tomb of Tutankhamun in the Valley of the Kings, an exact facsimile of Veronese's wedding at Cana. The biggest project that's going on at the moment is an exact facsimile of the tomb of Seti I, which will be given to the people of Egypt as soon as it's finished. 200 years ago, the concern was not one of preservation. The concern was one of Indiana Jones and discovery and excitement and cultural acquisitions. The tombs in the Valley of the Kings lasted successfully for 3,000, 3,500 years. But since they've been visited, they start to decline and decay rapidly. I think the facsimile is opening up a whole new level of possibility for display, preservation, conservation, restoration, communication, dissemination of what's important about these objects. If only we can preserve it like it is and document it and hand it on to future generations, then there's hope.